Hi everyone, today's video is going to be on SketchUp and how I used it to design my workbench. I've been meaning to build this workbench for months now, so today I finally make it start with the design first. I want this workbench to work as a mitre saw station. I also want this workbench to turn my circular saw into a table saw. Fingers crossed, it works. So as you can tell, it won't just be a simple workbench with a table top. Therefore, it is important that I get the design right first. This won't be a huge workbench, it'll only be 72 by 24 inch. And the idea is to keep this table as compact as possible, so it can fit in my conservatory for the time being while I finish rebuilding my garage. To start off with, I'll briefly take you through the finished design first. We'll then start from scratch and rebuild this model in this video. This, I'm hoping, will give you a rough idea of how to go about building your own woodworking designs on SketchUp. I've always found SketchUp, or any 3D modeling software for that matter, quite intimidating. It always felt quite complicated, but after giving it a go today, I realized it can be quite easy, and the learning curve isn't that bad at all. That's why I've decided to make this video, hoping that it will help you make your plunge into the world of 3D modeling. I hope you find this video useful, and it encourages you to start using SketchUp. For those of you who don't know about SketchUp, it is a 3D modeling computer program which can be used for a wide range of drawing applications. You can use SketchUp for architectural drawings, interior design, mechanical engineering and even designing video games. There is a web version which you can use for free and what we'll be covering in this video today. So let's get started then. So first of all, we'll briefly walk through the finished design first. We'll then go ahead and create a brand new design from scratch. Hopefully, I can build this in a good time and not take two hours this time around. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and hide some of these components so you can see the exact structure in a bit more details. I'll hide the tabletop and now you can see where the mitre saw will sit. My mitre saw is exactly 70 millimeter high from its base. So the board where the mitre saw sits will have to be exactly 70 millimeters from the tabletop surface. You'll also notice that I've had to cut a recess on the table frame. This means that this corner here will not be supported very strongly. So I've added two horizontal bars underneath to provide the extra support that's needed here. And on the left hand side, I may add some shelves or a drawer system in the future. So let's go and build this from scratch. You can start by visiting sketchup.com and opening a free account first. You can then visit app.sketchup.com. Once you're inside the web app interface, you need to go and create a new design. You can then go ahead and delete the default scale model. Before we delve any deeper, I'd like to introduce you to keyboard shortcuts. They're a huge time saver. It is definitely worth getting used to them from day one as they will make your workflow so much smoother. It will take you literally minutes to get used to. I'll paste the list of shortcuts in the description of this video. You can also find the full list on our website. I'll not go through all the buttons right now as it will be difficult to remember all of them in one go. I'll cover them as we go and as we use them in our design. So let's create our table frame first. The frame that will go right underneath the table top. So now that we have our first piece of 2x4 timber as for our frame uh, length, which is 6 to 9 inches, 3 inches uh, less than uh, the 72 inch width of the tabletop, accounting for the 1.5 inch overhang, we can duplicate this um, shape and um, create the, the other side of the frame. So for that, I'll do is um, I'll just click space and then select the component, press M and then control and as you can see the plus sign has showed up so I'll just move it towards sort of away from the original shape well and then as you notice the bottom right of my screen I'll just type 19 inches and then the gap between these two timber will be exactly 17 inch as you notice on the bottom right of the screen and that's because I type 19 screen inch because taking into account the two inch width of the 
okay well that's moving as well so now that we have that we want to create uh, the shorter uh, inner timber on the frame so I'll press R and then I will start creating this rectangle and I'll just create a random shape but on the bottom of my screen again I'll type 2 inches comma 17 inch and as you can see it showed up right in the gap we'll now use the push pull tool using the shortcut P and then I'll raise it to exactly four inches in line with the rest of the frame and then hit space triple click on the shape that you've just created press G to turn into a component so it doesn't get mixed up with the rest of the frame so we'll call it short frame timber there isn't really a logic to my naming convention here you can name whatever you like I guess or if you find a better naming reasoning so just press OK so we'll refer to our notes and then what we'll do is uh, we will replicate this shape now so this one again press move M for move and then control as you've noticed there's a plus sign again just start dragging it so we'll grab the corner and then we'll drag the corner to exactly this corner so it's perfect so you don't have to worry about you know if it's in the right spot or not what we'll do is we'll select the shape again and then press M again and then control for the plus sign and we'll move it this time well let's find out how many inches will have to be 14.5 inches from the right so what we'll do is um, so we'll select it again move and then plus and then we'll move it 14.5 inches this way again we need one last one which is 21.5 inches right again so we'll select move redo and move control and this time we want it to be 21.5 inches right so this is where our miter saw is going to sit so now that we have the the frame what we'll do now is start creating the legs in order to do so we'd probably be better off just hiding the just hiding all the shapes that we've created so far so just right click select right link and hide and then what we'll do is we'll create the first leg and again it will be a three by three leg so do a random shape and then on the bottom of my screen you notice I'm typing three inch by three inch and there we have it then hit space select tool P push pull and then up and then we'll we want our legs to be 34 inches tall there you go so now that we have our first leg we'll turn into component triple click press G and then call it table legs three by three three by three save what we'd like now is to duplicate these legs uh, and we want six of these so what we'll do is uh, again we'll just select the legs press M press plus and then we'll have our first leg now we don't worry about the positioning of these legs because we can snap them later on to the frame when we make them visible again so again I'll just select all of them now and then press M control and then shift and then I'll press M again and then control and then I have the other two now what I'm going to do is go on the visibility tool with the glasses there on the right hand side of the screen and we will say unhide all components now what we want is to place these legs where we want them to be so I'll just select one of the legs click away one of the legs and then press M and then select this corner we want this corner to be just over there so I'm just going to press O to all. change my view slightly and I'll zoom in and press M again I'll select that corner and I want it to be exactly to that corner fine now 
I'll do the same with the rest. So now what I'll do is I'll move the frame to the top of the table. So for that, all you need to do is shift click all the outer frame components, turn it into a group. And then what we'll do is, well, I missed that one. Turn it into a group and then with that group selected, press the M tool and move the up. So we want this corner to be aligned to this corner. There you go. So there we have it. That's our first structure. Now, what we'd like is we want a, an opening here so that the mitre saw can sit here and we can access it and it's sitting recessed inside the frame so that the tabletop can be the same level as the mitre saw cutting platform. So I could have created this frame short first and then uh, done it that way. So a piece here and a piece there, but uh, I I just found it easier to visualize the whole frame first and I can just delete this own component. So in order to do so, what I'll do is I'll delete this item from the group completely. And then what I'll do is I'll create this shape here to go there. So to do that, I'll measure from this corner to here. This is going to be two feet nine inches. And we know it's a two by four timber. So now we know, now we have the top frame and the recess cut for the mitre saw base. Uh, but there is a slight problem. We don't have enough support here just in case we wanted to remove the mitre saw and use the whole table as a table. There is no support here. So what we'd like to do now is add a piece of three by three timber to go across here. Um, but before we do so, it's important for us to account for the depth of the mitre saw. So we know the mitre saw is exactly 70 millimeter from um, high or height. It has to be 70 mil and we'll have an 18 mil OSB. So it has to be 18 plus wherever that is. So, so we know the mitre saw is 70 mil high. So we want it to be sitting exactly 18 mil plus whatever many millimeters that needs to be so that the platform can be that so it's flush with the tabletop. So it's 70 minus 18, so it's 52 mil. So this measurement has to be 52 mil from the table frame. So I'll just go ahead and delete all guides and then I'll measure 52 mil down from here. 52 millimeters. Millimeters. There you go. Now, um, so now we know that the mitre saw has to sit at this level, 52 millimeters from the top of the timber frame, and plus the 18 mil of uh, plywood that will go on top. Um, but the mitre saw has to sit on a piece of plywood again. So this plywood will have to be another. Perhaps I'll make it 12 mil this time. So now we'll build that piece of three by three to go across to provide the support on the top frame as we don't have any um, legs here and that 
corner may not be very strong. So um, we'll use that three by three to go across from one leg to the other, but we'll also make sure that the, that three by three um, has a recess to come up up to here so that the plywood can rest on it for the miter saw. So let's go ahead and create that three by three now. So now it looks like we have our uh, recessed frame where the plywood for the microsaw can rest on. So we'll just duplicate this one and push it back. So we'll just select, move, control, and then we'll drag this point to this point. So now these two pieces will give add nice bit of much needed support to this corner especially so that looks good already uh, we can use two screws on each side to connect it with this um, leg here and uh, the frame should be pretty solid we'll now go ahead and create the plywood piece yeah that's 12 mil it's where the mitre saw will sit on so for that we'll just use our rectangle tool Now that we have the mitre saw base, we'll also need to create a uh, base for the circular saw to act as a table saw, which has to be flush with the tabletop. So for that, we'll go ahead and create the tabletop first. Now that we have our tabletop, we need to cut an opening. This opening is where the circular saw will sit. We'll start off by hiding some components so that they are out of the way. Once that's done, we'll then measure 0.75 inch from the edge of the frame so the board can be supported on all three sides. To do this, I'll draw some guidelines with the tape measure tool. This will mark out the exact place where the opening needs to be on the tabletop. Once you have the rectangle marked out exactly where your opening should be, you can use the push-pull tool to cut the opening. To do this, just push the surface down until you see a gradient texture, half dotted, half transparent. That's when you know the surface will disappear if you push it down. We can now create the new 18mm thick board to fit in the opening. This will be the main circular saw attachment. And there you have it, my first ever serious attempt at creating a scaled model slash design on SketchUp. I really wanted to share this video so it can help others like me who are not quite sure where to start with 3D modeling. I'm sure there are SketchUp veterans out there who would have created this model in minutes. 
so please do share any suggestions or tips if you have any. I'll post the exact plan measurements on our website techlifediy.com and I'll paste the links in the description of this video. I'll also upload the .skp file if you're interested so you can load the design I've created on your own SketchUp account and modify or work off it if you wanted to. Next step for me now would be to actually head out and buy the timber and start building this workbench. I'll definitely record the actual build process too, so please subscribe to our channel so you're notified when I upload the build video. Please hit like and share if you found this video useful. It will really help support my channel grow. If you have made it this far, then cheers and thank you for your patience. Speak soon.